Cheers, everybody. This is Eric. I'm back. I'm going to do a different beer today. It's called Kvike, Kvike, Kv something. It is a Belgium yeast that was propagated from Belgium, and supposedly it'll ferment at 90 degrees, and it won't kick off all flavor. So I'm going to ferment it in the old garage. Give it a shot. That's coming up next. This is it. This is a... Uh, Yeah, um, I'm not even going to attempt to name that, uh, pronounce it. Um, it's kvike, kvike. It's 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 a yeast, and uh, this stuff was originated from Belgium, and it's supposed to kick off a very clean, clean ale, and um, almost lager-like is what I understand. So I'm going to be doing that, and I'm going to brew this today. And this is just a little golden golden ale that I did. That I'm going to do. It's uh, eight pounds two row, eight ounces caramel ten, five ounces of caramel twenty, and of course my brew salts. And I'm going to do Cascade and uh, Whirlpool dry hop, that kind of stuff. So, so I'm going to do this batch and um, see how she turns out. And um, it's supposed to ferment within 36 hours. It's supposed to be done at uh, 70 to 90 degrees. So it's stable there. So we're going to give it a shot, and um, that's coming up, and we'll, we'll go through the process here. So hang tight. All right. Batch is done. 78.8 degrees in the garage. I have a towel wrapped around it just to kind of keep sunlight off of it, or any light for that matter. So. We're gonna see where this thing goes. We've got about four more hours left of daylight, and um, if it starts uh, bubbling, starts fermenting, we're gonna we're gonna record it. I'm gonna keep on checking on it this afternoon, and see what it does. So we're gonna see. It's supposed to be done in three days, so we're gonna see. Okay, little update. It is lifted, and it is right at. 5.15 my time, I wrapped up brew day right around 2 o'clock. All right, it's dark. <laughs> this is stupid. Okay, um, I racked this beer at 2 o'clock, it's 6.30, and it's fermenting. This is just crazy. All right, this yeast is officially a mutant strain. Crazy, crazy. So um, I gotta work in the morning. Um, I'm gonna try to get up early enough to do a video and see what it's doing when I get up in the morning. And uh, let's see, 78.3. So yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> I can't, I can't believe this. this. This yeast is just nuts. All right, it's next morning. It's uh, 4, 15 in the morning. And uh, this thing is going like crazy. And uh, garage temp is 72.9. So, uh, yeah. It is a fast fermenting yeast so I'm gonna check it when I get home and um, see how she's going see if it slows down have a good barometer there all right I am back it is 6 15 my time and uh, we're still rocking along as we can see, it looks like it has slowed down just a little bit, but very, very aggressive still. So we're sitting here at 75.7 in the old garage. <clears throat> so I'm gonna do it again in the morning and uh, see where we're at. So. Here we go, stay tuned. This is day two, Kvike, a little over 
uh, 24 hours of uh, initial fermentation time. So here we go. Okay, home from work. 67.4 degrees in the garage. And it still is fermenting. I just saw one bubble. There we go. So it is tapering off and finishing out. And um, this is the second full day of fermentation on it. So uh, yesterday morning, it was uh, rocking and rolling like crazy, crazy. And then this morning, it was it slowed down dramatically. And then this afternoon, so I suspect tomorrow morning, it's probably going to be pretty much uh, done seeing activity. So we're going to see on that. So, all right, cooled off last night, so we can see, and it appears we have just about stopped. I'm going to give it till this afternoon and um, check it again. This is about uh, 48 in, 48 hours. All right, afternoon. We're about 60 hours in here. Looks like... push here there's still a little something there pushing on the fermenter still a little something so 60 hours in uh, 63.7 I think the temperature falling too had something to do with it maybe slowing it down that metabolic rate um, that would definitely affect the yeast so yeah it's uh, wrapping up for sure all right it's morning time and uh, last night I decided um, I was going to bring it in the house because it got uh, below freezing, a little too cold for being in the garage. So I moved it in the house. The house temperature is 72 degrees, but also have this uh, the, the probe sitting on top of the fermenter. And just for good measurement, I got an old heating pad, put it on low, and uh, sat the fermenter on the heating pad and uh, ramped that temperature up for sure. And uh, it started to blow off immediately. And um, yeah, looks like we're wrapped up. And uh, I'm gonna do a gravity reading on it and uh, see where we're see where we're gonna fall and see how it's gonna be. But yeah, it's, I think it's done. Uh, but I'm gonna check gravity. If it is, rack it to keg, carbonate, and uh, do a tasting. So 72 hours in. All right, beer is complete. Rack, keg, carbonated, ready to taste. But I have some information from White Labs that I wanted to uh, briefly read. Uh, kavaik or kavaik is an old Norse word loosely translates to lively. Used today to describe a blend of yeast used in various farmhouse breweries around Norway. Local breweries used uh, yeast for generations and passed the strains from beer to beer. Kavaik strains are prized for their high temperature tolerance. Most ale yeast ferment optimally range between 60 and 70 degrees. Kvikes actually prefer temperatures closer to 90 degrees. Now, I didn't do get up to 90 degrees on this batch. It's winter time, but uh, 72 in the mid-70s is a good number that I kind of stayed at, except for the nighttime. It got kind of cool. I think we can compress it down another day if the temperature was higher because that yeast does get really lively and uh, starts to rock and roll at the higher the temperature. So um, for all intents and purposes and ales, other than Belgium and wheat styles, this high temperature range does not result in desirable flavors and aroma. That's on the ale side, but in this yeast it does. High temperature fermentation serves to increase yeast metabolic activity, meaning they will ferment at an exponentially faster rate. Kvike cultures are able to hit the high terminal gravity limit within 48 hours. Now I didn't reach that, but the temperature wasn't as high as I needed to be. I'm gonna definitely be touching base with it. My main thing is to try this yeast and see the flavor profile of it. Is it gonna be more of a, a lager-like? Because I do like a lager. We all do, but they take months to get right, a long time. So um, can we get a lager-like beer in uh, days? We're gonna find out. Kvike cultures are temperature tolerant, 
faster fermenters, clean in flavor profile, vastly versatile in beer styles, New England IPAs, IPAs, red hoppy ales, stuff like that. That's what it's talking about. Brewers note more aromatics at warmer temperatures. The beer still has a clean finish. White Labs curated several Kvike strains from Norwegian farmers who are using them to produce very traditional Norwegian style beers. We used four Kvike strains, including newly released WLP 518 Opsog Kvike Ale Yeast to produce four versions of an IPA. Analytical data of these beers showed very low levels of ester compounds in the finished beer. Our senior brewing manager, Joe Kowalski, described working with the strains they fermented out within three to four days pretty impressive stuff peak diacetyl production detected was 40 parts per billion now i don't know what that means uh seems like very small but uh you want to get the diacetyl out of there evidently it gets out quick so we're going to try this beer see what it's like all right grain to glass five days <clears throat> very good very lager like very clean very crisp I've uh, I've done lagers that were not this good and two months on it and uh, this is very good um, I'm gonna have fun with this yeast this summer I uh, highly recommend this. This is really, really good. I'm very pleased with this result. This is a very basic recipe. Um, I wanted the yeast to stand on its on its own. It is a little hazy. Got a little haze to it, but uh, that's okay. That's okay. Um, for the flavor that I'm getting out of this in that short of time, and I think it can be compressed further with uh, higher temperature fermentation. This is a good beer, really good beer. Surprisingly good beer for the five days from grain to glass. So that's, that's incredible. Highly recommended from Eric's Home Brewing, that's for sure. Um, any questions, put them down below. Um, subscribe, thumbs up, all that good stuff. Tell people about, about this channel. I uh, just wanna keep on doing these videos, I enjoy it. I'm here to learn, help people, and uh, Get as much knowledge as I can along the way and drink plenty of beer. And uh, thanks for watching. And as always, cheers.